first of all, I think your analysis was very straight line. The street doesn't run in a straight line. Kid, you cannot tell your neighbor he is stealing ducks when you are stealing phones. As High Commissioner, I was wrong. As Charandas Prasad, I reacted naturally how any person would have. I did not come here for, for, for that kind of abuse. I did not come here for that kind of abuse. If you're going to go down that road, I'll walk off. But it's all okay once they're talking. If they were talking, I could not have been here today. You got AD, uh -huh. ADHD. I yes, got that. No, 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 calm down, calm down. I think I've done enough in terms of taking our team uh, out of trouble from losing. Come on, Lou Taylor. You got, got screwed. good. I'm reading the script now, and the first person that comes to my mind to play a detective, yes, but an erratic detective, is Mickey Rodriguez. Why you not freaking supper in young? Why you man and supper woman? Look, you deal with that. You deal with that. We must encourage platforms like this because it brings together different people and allows for discussions to, to take place in our country on a multiplicity of fundamental issues. Uh, KW apologizing for no, something no, 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 you no, think no. I did is wrong. I don't no, no. want you to do that and you should not have done that. Hi, good evening and welcome once again to the Gildari Freddy Kisun Show, wherever you are, whatever it is that you're doing. I hope that uh, you are fine, that you're taking care of yourself. It's always a pleasure coming to you, myself and my co-host, Freddy Kisun. Uh, it has been more than a year now. He says 13 months. So it seems like a, an eternity because so many things I've learned, uh, but it's been a pleasure. Tonight, we want to get down to it very, very early. Um, uh, we cannot uh, emphasize that as this country develops, how much imp or how important it is that we continue, continue the dialogues on the policies of the government, on our regulators, and everything that has to do with the control of what we have within this country. Tonight, we have such a man in our midst who is one of the uh, persons, a very important person when it comes to making policies for this country, but he oversees, anytime you're talking about infrastructure in this country and the building of such infrastructure plays a very, very critical role. I'm going to stop because I'm going to introduce my co-host, Freddy Kisu, no stranger to Guyana, and when I say introduce, it's always a pet something for me to say that I want to introduce Freddy Kisu, and I don't need to introduce him, but he has his own peculiar ways private joke between me and him and he is who he is and he has been uh, so so much so many years decades around Guyana, Guyana politics playing a role um, and he has his thoughts and a lot of people have been following him uh, this particular program I'm branching up a little has been a learning experience for me because as I sit and I listen to the problems of the people and the concerns of the people and listen to the policy makers as we would have had them one after the other within this program, I realize that I cannot sit on the sideline and just say, you know, let me be just another citizen. We have to continue in our own little ways to build this country, whether you speak up when you see something happening in the neighborhood or you report it to the police or you call out on your politician. You have to do something. Do not sit on the sidelines. I always say, do not sit on your hands. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, my co-host, Freddy Kisun. Hello there. Welcome to the Gildari Freddy Kisun Show. We've completed 13 months. Now, in those 13 months, we've had several calling programs, several. And without exception, every one of those calling programs, without exception, Callers have talked about roads, construction. There has been no calling program. We've had specific topics, and people have diverted from the topics and have called in about bridges, roads, constructions. And I am, we decided that, look, 
given this pattern of calls about construction, roads, bridges, we will have the, one of the ministers of public works who has graced our studios twice before and we thought we should have him here for one hour and a half to answer your questions because your questions have been unlimited in relation to the portfolio he holds. Our calls begin anytime now and we'd like to advise you, please respect the status of our guest. He is a cabinet minister and we will ask you to put your questions intellectually, grammatically shaped, observing protocol. Any attempt to be rude, we will cut you off because this program protects and has to protect its guests. They are our guests and we have to protect them. And if you're irritated about what has happened, call the minister, tell him where the irritation lies, tell him your feelings about some a neglect of some construction thing, but be circumspect. Um, all over the world, you have to be circumspect when you're speaking to people of certain um, positions. So the numbers are on the um, screen. Call in and let us know, as you've been telling us, as you've been letting Gildari and I know the past 13 years about the problems of construction in this country. Minister Deal that Indar is here to answer your questions. Two minor points before um, we hand over to the minister. I could never get this minister's name right. I grew up in a Hindu home and he has two first names, Deal that Indar. And every time I speak about this minister, I confuse the two names because they're two first names. So when we were putting up the advertisement, I told the graphic artist, in that deal that. And the man said, no, it's deal that in that. And finally, um, I don't know if this is a stale joke, but I'm willing to face the consequences for it. Could Minister Deal that in that recommend his tailor to Lenar Kedari? Over to you. Over to you, Minister in <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, uh, Freddie, for those kind words. And um, um, to Gildari for having me. Um, I know it's uh, about 8.30 plus tonight. Yeah. Actually going further than 8.30, right? We're going to 10. Okay. With so comments. I don't know who's up or who's not. But um, thank you for having us on the show. Um, before we go into the questions and the calls, um, when a country is under construction and Guyana is under construction, there are certain inconveniences that happen naturally by the advent of development. Your roads are going different place, new bridges are going different place, you have widening taking place, you have new housing schemes, you have everything. So the movement of utilities, movement of um, shoulders, reserves to accommodate the widening and so on, those things do happen when you're building housing schemes more most of them are built um, in new development areas so you have to traverse from the main highway through communities going to um, those new areas to develop them most of these things um, they destroy community roads because some of the trucks are you know large they carry carrying capacity is also too uh, heavy for the mm -hmm. weight bearing of the road that it was built for especially those community roads so you do have problems with, with those. So, you know, there's a general thing that, you know, um, when you have a country that is developing, and we are developing in every sector, um, construction in all of the different areas um, is happening, whether it's, you know, in the public side or the private side, you have, you have them going on. So you do have, uh, you know, the kind of disruptions on time, but, you know, it comes with when you develop it. If you're looking at the program now, the minister has a pen 
and paper. This is your time now to tell the minister about the particular problem you have in your area. Remember, ministers don't know everything that is happening. Please be specific, and he has guaranteed us that he will write it down and take action. So this is your glorious, great, priceless opportunity to get something done, corrected where you live. Um, three times a gentleman said to us, there is a road in Horstelling that is not done, and when it's raining, people have to walk through mud. You have an opportunity now to call the minister. The calls are coming in now. Okay, well, two, a couple of things uh, before we head straight into the call. A lot of calls coming in. The minister is in charge of GPL. He's in charge of roads and bridges. And so let's try to center the questions around that. Uh, I mean, a lot of people have asked us that they want to talk to somebody in authority. We have accommodated. and We know that the minister is very busy, like so many of the cabinet ministers. He is here to listen to those. Let's make it very short and snappy so the minister will take note of it and then we move on because we want to try to accommodate everybody. One and a half hour, let's go right into it. Uh, so, good evening, caller. Good evening. Yes. Well, I'd like to uh, bring to the minister's attention this is a road, a community road in Triumph, north of the public road, an area called Plot P. And that road has been and fix for decades. The local, I know there's a responsibility of the local authority and I know that the local mm -hmm. authority has not been able to do anything. However, the minister has, I mean the honorable minister of public works has promised to have that road fixed sometime during this year. And I hope that that call, will be done. Call the name of the street again in Triumph. I yes, don't think the minister... Astrat Street. What? Dastrat Street. Dastrat Street. Dastrat Street. North of the public road is north of the government compound, north and northeast. <clears throat> Has rat. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's Okay, thank you. The other thing I want to bring to the minister's attention, observation. With the expansion of government uh, infrastructure programs, the quantum of engineers appears the capacity the job of delivering and supervising government schools seems to be over there. The, the work would be, seem to be overstretched. And obviously, it may end up having that people are over, overworked, overstretching, and you lose in terms of equality, which means then that you, uh, you'll get some six or nine, either by difference or by people not being able to do anything. That is number one. Number two. In community roads, the roads I know the maintenance mentioned, okay, they have the shoulders, the roads are narrow. True. However, they are finding that they are double roads, they are quite double traffic going on those roads. And it means that the shoulder of the roads will, will go soon. So you talk about the narrowness of the road and those areas in community areas especially. Oh, yeah, right. So it will be in the interest of the, the government as well as the local authority to have the local authority designate those roads as one-way streets. So that the, the road, the, the shoulders are not damaged, there's only one way traffic would go. When two way traffic would, the traffic would have to go and damage the shoulder of the road. Thank you very much for that, Carlo. Could I, could I answer him there? Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. Go right yes, there. Okay, so, so right now, um, the ministry is looking at a number of roads on the East Bank and uh, West, uh, on the East Coast, on the East Bank, on the East Coast. It's gone? Yeah. Yes, we'll go ahead. Yeah, on the East Coast corridor. Um, so we're picking up a number of roads. Actually, the exercise is currently ongoing. Um, so the Ashrat Street in North Triumph, um, I'm going to make sure that I take a visit to the area too um, to look into that. With respect to the engineers and so on, it does have a point because when we came into government, the entire public works had about 300 roads for the entire year. We have built 2,500 roads and counting community roads and counting right now. Over oh, that three years? Oh, in, tr in three years. Wow. 2,500 and counting. And this year, the year is, we are in August, more 
um, roads are being advertised right now. We have about 70 being advertised. We have another couple of hundred more that is going to come out over the next, uh, within the next month, month and a half. Community roads, because as you could see, the vice president and the president normally goes out to communities too. You was just talking about that, Freddie, yes. uh, when we, before the, the program start. So we do have um, the ongoing process of picking up roads. Um, in communities, so as the guy said, it's decades that the road has not been done, so we'll look into it. But the engineers too, because we have um, so much of roads doing and they're using the same resources that you would have used to carry out 300 roads, you have to ramp up that. Mm -hmm. But a problem in the country with engineers and clerical works and so is that there's a shortage because most of them are picking up work in the private sector, yep. the oil and gas mm -hmm. industry and so. So you have, and again, MOP as well too. So. You have a problem with that, but we have to continue to train people, continue to, you know, make sure the university put out people, technical locations, schools, and so to put out people so you can get the clerk of works, so you can get the engineers, and continue. It's a never-ending cycle of training people to become, you know, um, an engineer in the field and getting them to do the work, but obviously if people feel that they're getting salary elsewhere, they can go on. Right. On the issues of the shoulder, before you take them on the call, right. this is an issue that you pick up everywhere in the country. Why is the road so narrow? But when you look at the schematics of the communities and so on, the normally is eight eight feet, ten feet mark. Maybe in but some cases, you 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 find the road broader than ten to fourteen feet, and then you have a drain on one side and a drain on the other side. And before the drain, you have a utility pole on one side, mm -hmm. and under the the road on the the other side, you have the GWI utility running. So if you extend the road yeah, you have to remove the right. utility which is a heavy cost then if you remove the on the extend on the right hand side or the wherever the, the gwi utility is running if you put hard surface over the pipe and heavy weight goes on it it cracks and it and, and it cracks the pipe start to leak at the bottom it will create a, a saga at the bottom and when the weight go on on it it will break it and then you think that the road wasn't built properly but it's because of the water that is leaking now when you got to go repair that too you got to dig up back the road and so on and go uh, okay. and repair it so you just don't have the space for the land in a lot of the cases uh, uh, to extend the road the only um, suggestion is that you concrete the drain and then you extend the road and that brings another set of costs with it concrete drains are very expensive too so you have to look so persons will say, but concrete the drain and do the road. But then you also have people with paved roads. Mm -hmm. And you have a whole lot of communities who, like this gentleman who does it, who haven't seen a paved road in a while right, here. Right, right. So uh -huh. you try your best to make sure that everybody have a paved road. And then, you know, you're going to the phase of where you're doing the drains. Thank so, you very much. So we take this out of call. Yeah. Call him my apologies. Go right ahead. Good evening, um, Mr. Gildari. Good evening, Mr. Kisun, and good evening, Honorable Minister. Hi, good evening. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah, we hear you clearly. Yeah. All right. Great. So I'm calling from Dazel Housing Scheme. I must compliment you on the work that is being done. Um, only yesterday, I'm seeing mm -hmm. a bridge that is bridging Dazel Scheme and Bait. Right? It's being constructed, something that we have never seen before. Right? And we must compliment you on that. And I must say, this is this is not a race thing, but this is predominantly um, African areas, right? Both Beirut and Dazel Scheme. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm pr I am from Dazel Scheme. And I know the government can do everything for everybody at one time. But all we're asking for is, if there's a little patch, we have, we have relatively good road. The major road is relatively good. Well, we have some huge potholes between 6th Street and 4th Street. We're not asking for the government to pave the entire road. Even if we get some full-up, some black-up, some patch-up, we will be grateful. All right? That's in Dazzle mm -hmm. Housing Scheme. What's your name, sir? Garnet. I'm your Garnet. Garnet, you, uh, many moons Garnet. ago, many moons ago, I was in Beirut. And uh, I met with the people of Beirut. And when I came out... We had a road program in Beirut, about $320 million worth. About six separate roads in Beirut. There have been, some have been constructed right now. Right? So we did, when we go into the community, we made the commitment. We do follow up on that. So Beirut, especially the main, the main road going into Beirut, they had some issues with the utility. 
and we straighten some of those and so more work needs to be done i will i will soon as time permits i will come back into the community to see what's going on in the asyl housing scheme to see what needs to be done there obviously um the demands on government the demands on the uh, on 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 infrastructure in communities is a lot because everywhere you go when we came into government in 2020 we went to the country everywhere and what we found the dilapidated housing schemes um dilapidated communities and so on. the roads the roads that are broken up because when people build and they move the trucks and the heavy thing through the, to break up the road now we started building them back in a rapid with a rapid rate so when you go into to the, the communities everybody have a demand so as much as i can you know go to the communities as humanly possible i try to um so i definitely would take a spin in beirut to see what's going on there but i know that through a tripartite arrangement between the ministry of local government public works and housing we have about 320 million dollars in projects in beirut following that visit yeah yes minister but um i'm not from beirut you know? I, I know i heard Dazil you you're from dazil houses okay. i heard you i said to you that i went in beirut so oh, when the time oh, permits, oh, I'll come to the other houses. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Good evening, Carlo. Hi, good evening to you, Leonard. Good evening. And to your friend, Mr. Kisun, and Mr. Bira. I am calling concerning these roads in Parfi Harmony. After 18 years, we now see some gradient stuff. They talk of getting the road fixed in Parfi. But what happened, I noticed that the, the, the roads are getting more narrow than wider. When you try to start to be contrasting in terms of the work they're doing, they are more alive more than you, the residents. That is one. Two, I call Melissa Indar, like some of these problems, and you are very aggressive towards me on the phone. That wouldn't be a group of us because I had the phone of people here and calling them. What's, 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 what's your name? What's your name? What's your name? Mike Jandu, sorry, you know me very well. Mike Jandu? Yes. And where is your uh, where is the road that you talk about? Parfait Hammond is one of the uh, biggest schemes in the country. So which which is the particular road? I'm talking the road that you and I walked when you were in here when you called me on the old bridge. We walked this area. So one of the roads that behind this thing. So what can you told. can you give me a name of the road? Where? Yeah, so where's the road the name here has names, Chief. Uh, these roads do have names in here. Where is it located again? This is behind the private school. The West Minister White Shop area. But is it 16th Street, 17th Street? And I think they had some names to them. Well, so when is the private? I'm here for 18 years, and we have to wait 18 years before we get a road grade. 18 years. Sir, I, sir, I listen. I the ministers, sir, 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 listen. Sir, listen. Sir, Mike, Michael, sir, let, let sir. me try to solve the situation. Listen, Where's the road? Listen to me. So, Parfait Harmony has seen one of the biggest spending for housing schemes in the country. Right. Only recently we did we awarded sixty five roads there. We have done another thirty three before that, and another forty before that. So right now they are all over Parfait Harmony. Their work's been happening. So if you're calling for one particular road, I understand what you're saying. But there's a massive scheme, and you would know that the road in front of the Westminster Primary School is it? No, no, no. The private, not primary, the private school. Uh, a private but school. school was the one that we visited earlier that I... Yeah, what's but, the uh, name of the private school, sir? What's the name? Era, the new era prim, uh, private school is very common. New the era private school. It's so new era private school. I look at it, but you would know, and you have to be truthful to yourself. Because I can put, if I had the chance, I'll put up a map on the screen to show the amount of roads that our government is doing in Parfait. And that Parfait Harmony, Westminster... Uh, Reg Dorsey, Lost in Russ, all of the, we are doing roads everywhere in there. The main roads we are doing as well too, so roads are being done. But you got to also understand, and I know people are frustrated, and that is why I said earlier, when a person is living in a community and their road are not doing, and the one up the street is doing, they, they, yeah, naturally it upsets right. them. But everywhere you go, so when, if, 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 if we do like 120 roads in Parfait Harmony in the housing scheme, Parfait, Westminster, Lost in Ross, Rack Dorsey, and, and so on, right? You're doing roads in there. But they have horse telling. They have farm. 
If you go to farm now, you'll see what was happening in farm. So those people, those residents to dissolve roads too. So you can't put all the money in one place. But no, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely not. When you're with the party, honey, I want this whole community with you, but I didn't walk where I'm living to show you my road. I will look at the health center room, we look at the school rooms and all the roads. All right, so, right. Good. So, so, so here, so, so here. I'm more so, important so, than I, my road. Well, good. What, so, I'm saying, I, I, what I'm saying is now that they are doing my, where I'm living, the, the one that should get more fine, so the work is not, and I wish if you could come through, work with me again, and you will see the quality of work these contractors are doing. Well, look when into that. Well, we'll look into that. We'll look into that. Them, no, this is wrong. I, I don't think I have to get a PhD or, or, or something to tell them about rules. So what do you want, that, Mike? What do you want? What what I want? If you come and I send it in, if you walk with me, you will see what. No, no, I'm not gonna walk with you. No, I'm not gonna walk with you, Mike. Work. Mike, I'm not gonna walk with you. I'll make sure that I take my engineers and I'll go with my engineers and I'll check this road. I'm not gonna walk with you, and I have my reasons why I will not do that. I think I know who I know, I'm talking I, to now. You know, but here, here, sir, 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 sir. No, no, no. I got, well, it, it, I got, I got the complaint. I'll have my engineers go and check it out, and I will go myself because I drive through those communities in the nights. I when people sleep in, that is when I drive through those communities and I check how, what. How, how we the residents were able to raise this issue with you? You're, you're raising it with me now, sir. You're raising it with me now, and I will go and check and see it. I will check the bill of quantity, the, the width of the road. We'll go and measure the road. We'll check and see exactly what's happening. Right, Mike? Okay. Well, thanks. Thank you. Hello. Good evening, Carlo. Hi, good evening, um, Leonard. Good evening, Freddie. Good evening, Minister. Go Hi, ahead. good evening. Yes, um, all right. Um, what can I say? Uh, Minister, I have to tell you that I am, I'm, I'm very, very, very impressed with, um, with the work that you have been doing. Um, I, um, Thank you. I want to be a little bit critical here, though. Um, um, as a guy, and he's living in the U.S., um, I, I, I don't know if I can use this word. Um, the unfortunate thing is that the, the coalition has performed so badly. It means that the present government, which I support, I'm a part of the PPP, does not have to perform too much to make the, the coalition look so bad. However, I'm asking, I'm begging that you guys don't use that as a yardstick to underperform. So that is the issue, sir? Um, yeah, yes, that, 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 that's my contribution, uh, Minister. That's okay, my contribution, okay, Minister. Okay, and, um, and Freddie and, and Gerard. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, again, I'll reiterate my oh, okay. position. The, the, the coalition has performed so badly, I do not want the PPP to use that as the arts. So it's an advice. Oh, oh, okay. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thank it's a, a political. It's a, it's a political comment. Let's move on. Yes, sir. Let's move on. All right. Good evening, Carlo. Yes, go right ahead. Hello? Yeah, hello? Yes, go ahead. Hello, Mr. Gildari and um, Mr. Minister. Hello. I'm sitting here listening to you guys. Hold on one second. Hold on one Yeah. Hello? Yes, you go ahead. We listen very clearly. All right. I'm listening to you guys and the... Um, the minister talking on Thunderstorm. The minister talking about the narrow roads. The people talking about the narrow roads, right? And you can't do this and you can't do that. It don't make no sense what you guys are saying, what the minister is saying. Because when two cars try to pass on the road, are you there? Yes, yeah, we, we listen, hear. we listen. Go ahead, sir, we hear. When you build a new road in less than a month, I live in Diamond in, in Grove Diamond Houses team. And I'm seeing it every day. You build a road, and then a week later, the, the car's got to drive on the parapet, and the road is breaking up. No, you didn't listen to what the minister said. The minister said it is impossible, it is going to be difficult to, to have the road at certain width. Because, because of the infrastructure, the cost of the utility poles. And trenches on both sides. You were talking about the quality of the, the, the road, which is two different issues. Right, I understand what you're saying there, but the minister's saying, if you put concrete rain, if you put concrete rain, it's going to cost money. If you don't put concrete rain, it's going to cost money to rebuild the road. That's bottom line. Uh, can I answer him now? Sure, yeah. please go ahead. Sir, so I do understand your frustration, and your frustration is not isolated. 
everywhere in this country that we go, you hear the same thing. Everybody wants wide roads so that both cars can pass. But whilst one community and one set of residents are asking for wide roads, there are those who never see a road bill in 20 years. There are yeah, kids. Sir. sir, hold on. Let me talk now, please. You, you had the time to say. You have communities that you go that people, children are walking in mud. What do I do? Do I broaden a road, put in um, um, concrete drains to satisfy persons driving on two lane, or do I take the money and I go into the communities and make concrete roads for the children them that um, that walk in on mud? If you go to Canal Number Two, the kids them that live in in the riverine community, they take the boat, they come to a landing, they have to walk from the landing to the road in mud before they go to school. Don't you think that we could go and concrete the place um, and help those kids out? So we gotta. I understand the frustration about persons got to drive on the corner. We see it all the time. But it's not just about the roads, too. Uh, drivers, too, sometimes they drive big trucks, they park them on the road. So if they park them on the road, the other person have to take the carpet, and that breaks the road. And this is not your community diamond alone. Everywhere you go in the country, that is where you find. If there's a place where you have areas that you can widen the road, and the road normally is widened. So well, I do hear your frustration, but sir, I'm telling you, in Diamond, the utilities are on one side of the road, and the, the and the utility, the public utility in terms of the electricity is on one side, and on the other side, the they have the um they have the GWI running underneath. I think Sixth Avenue Diamond is a classical example of that. I had to we had to widen Sixth Avenue Diamond and Seventh Avenue Diamond to accommodate that. You see, we had to do broaden the road and put the concrete thing in it. But it's not a cost. It's not a cheap. Venture is mm -hmm. a very expensive venture. Mm -hmm. So when you do in one community, you can't do in the others. You I think what you're trying to say, is too. that that there's going to be limited resources I, that you can't. We don't have a never-ending right. um, right. course. We have to work with what we have. You know. Um, one of the callers said, "If okay. these streets are so narrow, why not make them one way?" I mean, that's uh, yeah, that's a good idea, but. Uh, it also have traffic management to that too. What we have done, what we have done in some cases, like in Independent Street in Lagrange, uh -huh. they had the issue where the utilities on one side, which is the the on the left side, you're going in utility um, Independent Street. You have the power lines on the left, and you have the water on the right. The last time I went there, there were 13 breaks in the pipe because of the very thing. You know, what we try to do we make some slips. So that when a car is coming, one can slip in while he pass and then come out and go. So where do you have the accommodation to make these slips mm -hmm. at, uh, in the roads? You can make them so that one can come in while the other one pass and one can come in. But when you got the utilities, do you have a problem there too? Because they had 13 breaks in the pipe. Yeah, quickly, sir. So. Yeah, go quickly, ahead. Quickly, so. sir. Quickly. Yeah. Mr. Minister, I live in Grove Diamond Housing Scheme, right? Right behind the primary school, right in that area there. And the roads are very wide. They have the they have the space to build the roads um, at least two feet so two cars could pass without driving on the carpet. I got I got a land that I spent a lot of money on and it don't make no sense. People driving on my lawn. The only thing left me to do is put bricks and chain around it. And I don't wanna do that. Wait, you mean the lawn is the carpet in front of you? Yeah. Yes. Yes. They're driving up on the thing, and you have the space to build the road, but they're not building the roads more than. Um, I think I explained myself to you, sir. I think you, I explained you, myself. Uh, you see, there's one other thing. Um, I think what is coming out very clear is that what the minister is saying against people's expectation and what is available in the budget and when you have 300 villages in Guyana, which one do you give them and how do you spend those resources it's a I question think we, of got, we got to be realistic about it too um i am myself i am about to complain to the minister about seventh avenue and diamond but i realize so that the country is short of um um uh, contractors and so on i go through that every day i know it but there's some roads there's some roads that you could make them a little wider. Yep. Oh, but, oh. A minister has taken note of that, and I'm going to be making sure I sit on them on that too. But thank you very much for that, to call out. I'll tell you one more thing. One, I'll quickly, sir, so quickly. Uh, Dime, um, Grove Diamond Primary, the school from the, far, the, from the first bridge to the school, you need to send, um, you know, you need to get that road look after. Because when the kids got to go to school, the kids got to walk their mud. Car, two cars can't pass on that road. Well, there's, a, there's a market road. There's a market road. 
No, not the, yes, the market road. Thank you very much. I'm familiar, familiar with it. Thank you for coming through. Okay, good. That road is, is, is a yeah. terrible street. Very familiar with it. Thank you. Good evening, caller. Hi. Good, hi. good night, guys. Um, let me compliment you guys on this very good, um, what you are doing here, having the minister and having a call-in program. That's very good. Uh, my concern is from Region 6, uh, up, uh, up the quarantine at Wim Village. Wim Village, yes. I passed there yesterday. Yeah. You, um, the minister, the ministry did a great first time in history. I ever seen a whole scheme or a whole village, all this trick has been done. From the public road right down to the one side. On both sides, all the trick has been done. Some of them probably will be fine because of the necessary of the, the, the utility post. That is not the issue. There is the seventh street on the um, on the one side over. There is a wooden bridge there. All the rest of the streets the guy, the, whoever did it, they did a um, call button, nice tube and call button on it. That is the only street the wooden bridge has been remained there, right? You can then now presently you guys are doing the uh, the silent arm. It's turning into a nice pitch road, and if you decide to, you can drive over now from the silent arm to all the street except the seventh street. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, sir. So in Wim. Last yeah. year, when the vice president led a team to Borbisa, I was part of his team, and I went to Wim, and I went to see all sure. of the streets in Wim, and we did all of them. Our government did, the PPP government did perfect. all the streets and in Wim. Perfect. Right? I know of it, yeah. but the back of Wim further down, they've got a little more work to get done. But you must understand, if you go to Region 6 yeah. and you go to Fort Ordinance, they got some places there, the same thing was explained to the person earlier. They got some places there that got bad roads if you go to chesney um you'll find some of them um they got bad roads there if you go you to bar so they have other chesney areas also. that need help too so we got to make sure that we move around the resource so every community no. um can feel government services coming to them and infrastructure coming to them so just just a minute minister i am not complaining about the government no, no, I, I heard you. I heard, I heard what you said about the thing. But I'm just telling you about the Seventh Street Bridge. Yeah. So we are doing a lot of bridges, and so uh, we are, we are convert, we are moving out the wooden bridges into what we call um, concrete bridges and steel bridges where we can yeah. put them. So that is what we are doing. But we want to make sure that we do the bridges and the roads towards a school, health center, public buildings. You know, like where we have a lot of traffic, children, yeah. you know, sick people, and so on. Those are the priority areas that we. You know, we look to to to, to build the bill for us, but, but Wim Wim, uh, I think Wim is completely built it, out. It, that's what that, that's why I'm saying. I, I find it odd because this this whole scheme is completely built out, but that wooden bridge is still there. I'm not. I find it odd. I don't know if this is on behalf of the contractor side. I don't think it's on the government side because mm -hmm. I find it odd that all the streets have been occurred and um, all but. And this specific one has left. I don't think. Uh, I think I'll look at it. I'll look at it. All right. Thank All you. Right. Thank you very much for coming through, right. Carlo. Thank you. Yeah, right. Hello. Good evening, Carlo. Hello. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Please load the volume of what you're listening to so we could hear you clearly. Am I on the referring to the issue? Yes, you are. Raise the issue. We're talking roads, bridges. G GPL. Uh, GPL. All right, good. I would like to, uh, my pity on it is that, simply simple. The government is doing a lot of work in respect to its structure for the past few years. And those who are complaining in not having wood here or in not having wood there, they're instead of our silly bitches, tell me you're not going No, 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 so, no, no. so, so. So, no, no, so, no, 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 so, no, 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 don't let us, don't let us, don't let us, you take that back, go on, go on, go on, I understand. So them, so them, in compass, government resolve, and they want a big road, and they don't want to take, they will take over the government resolve, and they still want, they want cake and they want bake. All right, so you, you, you're urging people to be a little patient. When the, op when the opposition was in power, nobody said it was rude. Nobody in crime but bridges. Nobody in crime but culverts. But now this government 
that's trying to help each and everybody. And then it's a big ball of food. All right. So you're, you're saying you that job, people should be a little patient. A job, and I must say the government is also doing a lot of job to help the Guyanese people. The Guyanese people are helping, and which is very good on behalf of this government and helping the nation and people of Guyana. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you very much. much. All right. Thank Thank the government. So, good evening, Carlo. All right. He missed that. Roads, bridges, GPL. Good evening, Carlo. Uh, good evening, uh, gentlemen. Good evening, uh, Comrade Minister. Hey. Um, two things. Can you um, please give an update on what's going on with the Del Monte Road uh, between Perique and Goshen, and also uh, what is happening to the um, sand extraction around the um, number 58 village in uh, Bridge 6 Corinth? Okay, so um, on the Del Monte Road, um, the alignment has been cut. Um, and that project is still on our priority, is a manifesto promise, so our government continues to look to the Del Ponte Road. With respect to the sand extraction at number 58 village, there is an issue there with a couple of contractors um, and the NDC that our, our that a team went up there to look at what's going on with the removal of sand in an area, that um, the persons who are removing the sand claim that they, that is their um, land. Um, so, government got involved and went up there. Um, officials from the Ministry of Housing, the NDC, the region in Region 6, as well as the Ministry of Public Works, they went up there. Myself, Minister Ashney, and the Vice President also took a trip there last week, last Saturday, last Saturday the previous Saturday. Um, so, we, uh, we continue to monitor this because we just built a road at 58. We just built a brand new farm to market road at 58 under the Ministry of Public Works so that thousands of acres of land can be opened up and people can move their, you know, the produce in a, out and, you know, we can able to farm the area. So it's something that is ongoing, but um, we have um, cautioned people to, you know, if they go too close to the road, they will undermine the road because they can't dig the sand from close to the road. Yes, right. there got to be rules of engagement. I mean, may I say that I find that you have a lot of cojones to be coming on a show like this and open, and I don't know of any other minister who have done this. Hello, so Carlo. thank you very much. Go right ahead, Carlo. Um, oh, Mr. Yes. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Kisuncho, um, go right ahead. <laughs> um, I'm calling to, um, to um, complain about a uh, road project that would happen in my village. I'm calling from Region 7. Region 7, yes. Car um, so this project road would have just complete like three months ago, but the road already breaking up a lot of whole, a lot of pathways. What's the name of the road um, in Karau? Is I know the village, but do you have any um, name I could identify it by? No, it, it, the, um, the entire um, internal road. The, the, the project was to do internal road in the village. It's like one main public road. Okay, so I was um, two sat two weeks ago. I was in um, I was in Bartica, and um, I in the periphery of Bartica too, up to um, the four mile road as well in um, by by the Rabo and all the other places. Um, I went and checked out the entire area on the instructions of the vice president. I was supposed to go to Corral, but. Um, the time didn't permit. Is that I, the ministry's project or is that no, no, it's, I, I, it's, it's, it's most like the region? It's something from the region, but I will have I will have my colleagues look into to this one here yes, and see yes, what's please. going on with um, the Corral Road. Uh -huh. so, 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 so folks, um, the, the projects that is done at the local government no, but level? Don't say, but uh, just leave it as right, a, right. one government, so one I, will, government. I will talk to my colleague to look into uh -huh. it. Thank you. Good evening, Carlo. All right, 231-2982, or you could call 637-1071. You have Minister Diodati and Dyer, Minister within the Ministry of uh, uh, Public Works, and he's talking about roads, bridges, and GPL. Good evening, Carlo. Yeah, good, uh, good evening, Mr. Gildari, to you, the Minister, Mr. Frederick. Freddy. Good evening. I'm busy guy with the car from horse selling the concerning road. Yes, you call her uh, yes again. Yeah, and they, oh, yes, they, yes, they, yes. They finally come and did the road, right? The I just want to say thanks to the, to, the, to the government, but the next thing I got, the, the next which, I first of all, which road are they talking about in our still, eh? Yeah, the, 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 uh, the homeless scheme toward bridge, but it would, they were not. They get it, they come and fix it eventually after 10 years. Yeah. Freddie Kisson had anything to do with that? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, a politician yeah, yeah. then. Thank you for that. Because he makes a lot of... Still jokes. Still oh. jokes, sir. Go on. Yeah, um, the Moko Main Road. Right, I'm living... Right, right, I'm watching the road right now. The road is a terrible state. And I, I don't see anybody coming and patch up those holes and some big, big holes on the main road. Then I drive this road every day. Like, if you come down from the double road, and you turn in to come to go to Moko, you come into the public road. If the turn is terrible, they were all the road block up there. Nobody is that doing anything with them over there. All right, and so uh, just something to look into, but um, like r repairs and maintenance of the highways and the main access ways and so, it's done by our ministry's force account unit or the special projects unit in the Ministry of Public Works. So okay, I, for the past I, couple of weeks, they have been doing, they, they actually put 1,500 uh, tons of asphalt from the airport coming straight down. Yeah, I must say it's a little for bit. That, right. For so that, for that, the entire area there. I know of the big truck. I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to say it on the program, but I know of the big trucks them that moving through Mocker Road. Um, so we're gonna look in, I'm gonna look into it. But the yeah, but the, the 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 unit that does this work is on the East Coast doing some work in some communities that um that needed badly. Somebody patch up coming from the police station and a gamba we see we then little pass the station is going to do Sammy please somebody patch it and a gamba we see we get I live right there drive the show every day, every single day. All right, we got you. We got you. I'm from it. I drive through the road every day. Thank you, Mr. Freddy. Thank you. Bye. Good evening, Carlo. Hi, good night, uh Minister. You know, I know you guys, you and the vice chairman was the vice president was up here two Saturday ago in Region Six. And you guys were registering for the small business um, grant, right? Could you shed some light for the Region 6 people? I don't think they're fully educated about it. Please? Well, the small business grant was done um, in conjunction with the Ministry of Local Government, uh, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of um, Industry and Commerce. So that program was done um, through those ministries. So I, I don't want to comment on that here because it's not my the, the criteria the criteria to yeah but as i said to you sir that that is not something uh, under my uh, ministry we gotta bring the relevant you. person maybe so the I'll, I'll, I'll definitely um, right. I'll, I'll get your number and i'll be... maybe get somebody to call you and, and explain to you right yeah so, you can get it right here from Gilda. yes thank, I guess. Uh, thank you very much for coming through there carlo well, get number there. good evening carlo Good evening, Carlo. I think we lost that one. Good evening, Carlo. Hi, good evening. Um, good evening to the minister. Good, good evening, evening to um, Freddy and uh, Gilda. Are you guys hear me there? Yeah, we hear you. All right. So this is um, this is uh, Carlo. Carlo did last week on um, on um, on the show from Supernam to the street lights. Now, I just want to make a quick um, something here, actually, minister. Uh, when those are these street lights, or I would say the road light, the main road light, down in Esquivel, it will be weak sometimes, different villages. I, I think, it's just my opinion, I don't know, maybe the minister can shed some light on this. We have a lot of contractors here. I, I think it's by right that at least somebody from Esquivel will be given that contract, so whenever those lights are down, within a week, within a couple of days, it can get fixed because it, it prevents a lot of road accidents, road users, women who are driving, well, first of all, you can't get me in trouble, sir, because we can't give the contract, right? <laughs> you had a bid no, for the I stuff, can't. right? <laughs> yeah, okay. but uh, but there is there is there is some wisdom in in having persons from the Give region it. do the work, yeah, yeah right? I like that idea. But they gotta make sure that the person got a bit too, right? Oh. So whenever the, the the thing is out, you got a bit too, right? But I do hear the complain, and from time to time, our team go up there and try to get, you know, the the lights fixed. It's a constant thing with them because you know when you get outages and so some of the fuse blow, it knock out an entire two three village, you know. So these right. are the things, you know, the, mo the mobilization and response time to it. Sometimes you know it, it might need a little improvement, but I do take there's some wisdom in what you say that people from the region should should give be given some opportunity, but persons have to bid too and have to be competitive too, right? So right. that right. is the issue with that. You got to make sure you bid and you bid competitive. So whoever is interested in doing it, in, if it includes you two, you got to make sure right. that when the tender is out, you, you you look for it and make sure you you of know. Of course, of course, of yeah. course. Well, that's my call to um, I'm a minister, you know, but I don't want to say you know. Okay. Anyway, second, <laughs> second, 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 second um, question to 
to you. By the Cook community from Forest Ave, because I'm a businessman, there's a Forest Ave to 9th, Forest First to 7th Avenue, Forest to 9th Street. That's, that's not even bigger than a community in Essex. Some communities are Essex or in Essex. I think um, I'm speaking on behalf of them because I go there and I drive a lot there. I take my vehicle there also. I think, we, you know, we got something good for Barnica and all those roads that are surrounding the Barnica community. Community. I'm not just by the rabble and we're talking about where the busy zone. Yeah, so the internal, so on, on Forest Avenue, I actually walk Forest Avenue with the elected mayor, deputy mayor, the REO, and my engineers, the people from the ground in Bartica. We walk all the streets and all the avenue in Bartica proper. Forest Avenue is one of them that we walk. There is a number of things that we have to do there. I know there's parts of the road are breaking up. The shoulders is slipping too, so work will be done there. Um, and some of the internal roads, and so there are some failures, and some because the roads are narrow there, the trucks move and they break the side of the road. There are some field culverts there. We've done a complete assessment of the place, the drainage, the roads, the cocos, uh, Mong Ripper um, Creek, um, and the other ones that I told about um, in 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 um, Dark Point, um, and then um, one to four miles and then the, by the Rabo area too. But there are some other works that will be done there. Um, shortly, you'll see those works being fleshed out. Right? And one, one other question I know quick before is you, Minister. There's CPL coming out. There's cricket tomorrow, I think. When the CPL comes out, ones are being disenfranchised or somewhat. Can we have with a recommendation maybe for two or two minutes now, that maybe a ferry on those days because all the hotels are booked up with you. I like that. I like that. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a fair. Let me say that's a that's a that's a reasonable request. That, right? That's a reasonable request. Right. 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 That's a reasonable request. We just we just four dominate this country. That's a that's a that's a that's a reasonable request. So I, I would like to recommend that on the sporting events, like when you have the building expo, when you have CPL, when you have major events, that we can have a a fair because most of those hotels are booked up in town. Right, so I'd like to hear you, Father. Thanks a lot. Well, it's something, something definitely to look into. It's not an unreasonable Thank request. Thank it's you. just a question of time. CPL starts this mm -hmm. month. Good evening, Colonel. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, ma'am. Yes, I'd like to draw the Minister's attention, please, to the roads at Buxton and Annandale on both sides, the north and south side. The uh, south side doesn't seem so bad. You could probably wait in the priority of things but the north side is in bad shape this is in annandale ma'am yes annandale boxton okay so but the water tank is a big tank okay so right now there are a number of roads i think maybe too close to maybe maybe five to six hundred million dollar worth of contracts in annandale north and south those roads were con um, approved and uh, they are supposed to start I think only three of them out of the lot started, but I've had some talk with the contractors. They were supposed to start those roads in Annandale North and South. Right now, there are a number of roads in Buxton North out of Tender. Um, a lot of them out of Tender and the in, um, Industry Pleasance, Buxton, in those areas, in the North side. They are out of Tender right now, so those will also get um, reconstructed. The ones that are already contracted for Annandale, North and South, because the president went there in two outreaches, and he made the commitments for those roads. So they they actually already awarded, and um, the contractors really have to push a little more to get them fixed. Because um, I went to those areas too, and I saw the roads, and I, I, I saw them with the president. So, and... The AG and Inland, the Lal was with us as well too. He's from there. He's from yeah, So there. yeah. So we were we were we were in the community. Um sorry about the delay in it, but those those will in fact, you know, before the end of the week I'll try and take a take a walk up in another deal and see what's going on. Okay, very good. I appreciate your assistance. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Road bridges, GPL. How strange no, enough that nobody complained about GPL no, today, man, with roads and bridges. This portfolio were taking lights and those things. Too. Lights okay. and so on. Let's yeah, see. Nice. There's a number um, they, um, Good evening, caller. Reconstruction of the seawall. Hi. Go ahead. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Uh, I just want to ask the minister. There were the enterprise uh, recently, and the vice president made some promises. Uh... I wonder if you can update us on that. 
Okay, so right now there are four teams of construction, um, equipment, and personnel in Enterprise. Um, in Enterprise, let me just just give me one minute. I'll give you some specifics. So we have done out of the ten roads that we've identified that to be completed in Enterprise. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them are completed. About 1,300 tons of asphalt have been placed on about 3.4 kilometers of road. Um, there are a couple more to get done. There are a couple of culverts at the back and at the front road, they have to get some revetment because the road, the road shoulder is slipping into the trench between Enterprise and Enterprise Garden, if you know the place well. So um, there are some um, immediate um, inter intervention. There's the road now between um, that is Lincoln um, Enterprise, um, the front street that the trucks broke up. That went out to tender. The tender is closed. The evaluation is finished. So we'll have to do that road. As soon as it's awarded, we have to do that. And that will be a concrete road. So a lot has been done from the time the vice president and myself went to Enterprise to this morning because something I check on every day. Just, just in case, um, before the next caller come, the minister also deals with other things apart from roads, bridges, and GPL. Lights, um, seawall, the re, um, re architecturing of the seawall by the bandstand. So there are other things you can call in on. The seawall road is looking, the seawall by the bandstand is looking fantastic. Um, I don't know the minister remember Alam Rode. You got a remark of a memory. Good yeah, evening, Carl. <laughs> Good evening, Carl. Good evening again. Good evening yeah. again to you, gentlemen. Um, minister, um, you know, I, I called earlier. I'd like to just raise a quick point here, Dr. Minister. Um, what I've noticed over the past years is that um, there was a lot of number of turns coming in the Puerto Rican service. I'm, I'm also people boat owners here. I, I have I'm one of two vessels. And um, what I noticed is that Bartico had some radio hoop, had probably a couple, but radio hoop has the majority flow of passengers. And I don't know why everything that is happening now, I'm not saying that the government should not give turns, but we would have had over the last year probably close to 16 turns, and that's affecting the whole surface. Also, Where is that? Radio loop, he said. No, no, no. Where is that? Turns affecting the service? To Rico to Supernap. So, so, sorry, you got you got it. Sorry, you gotta be honest. Please we have, we have that. No, so please remember. Please it. remember. Please remember that I also check the traffic between well, me, Rico and Supernap. Let me just make a point and then you can you can respond. Let me before I first make what I'm going to say. So if you look at the traffic, most of the people are going on the big boats. Somebody come with four or five or six persons traveling. If six persons come at $9,000, but if they go on the big boat, they're six by 380. That's what, six, six, four, seven, four, seven, four hundred dollars, they're gonna go with the big boat because the ferries are fast. They're just an hour and a half going across. Now, what I'm trying to say is that Radio Hoop has a more traffic than Puerto Rico to... You see, sir, I'm sorry, let, let me, let me, I, I know where you're going with this. No, but I just want to make no, one point before. No, 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 hold, hold, let me, let me answer your question. You, you, you're going on and on and you're trying to say things here that I am telling you clearly is not a reflection of what's on the ground. The Parika Supernam, they have the torn system there. Some people did get turns into it because the, the files are tick like this at Marad with the amount of people wants to, that want to get torn. But the traffic has increased tremendously because I monitor the traffic from the monitors that Marat place at Supernam. So please, I don't think you should mislead anybody because you I certainly can't mislead me on this one. The other thing is, the, hold on, let me finish. The other thing is if we new people them. The we new people them that work the speedboat, they just met with us up only this morning. And they met with us before when they strike. And there are two people that got turns into Vridinu. And they complain too, because nobody wants to see the pool of speedboat operators, water taxi, or however you want to call it, increase because they think that they're losing out. But the traffic in both sides has gone up. The economic activity in Region 2 has skyrocketed that we might have to put us another ferry. The president only mentioned that yesterday when he went to Mashabo. 
then we might put another ferry. So please don't say that, you know, you, you all are suffering because of them. Because I can call you tomorrow and I can go down to Marad and I can show you the amount of the, the boats them that are doing how many trips now as it was before. And I'm telling you, it's a significant increase. All right, uh, all right, but well, you can't. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, they would yeah. have to contact you. Yeah, yeah. Um, are we gonna? One, one no, 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 no. One thing yeah. more before me to go. One thing more. Uh, so what affect us is what we call the lash boat. The lash boat, they are not allowed to carry um, sailors, so they are up and down, up and down, and torrents are still. Um, License has still been offered. And, 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 uh, no, man, no, no, no. Please don't do that. Don't do that. License are not offered to no um, hunt boat. That's why they call them hunt boat. Because they're there deciding to get whatever business that they, um, they could get. Please don't do that. Please, uh, sir, I am a guy that... I All right, thank you for do. coming up, Carly. I had two shots with it. Thank you. Good evening, Carlo. Good evening. How are you? Pretty good, sir. Go right there. Uh, I would like to ask good night to the minister. And Mr. Gildari and Mr. Freddie Kisun. Yes. I'm posing a question to the minister. And I would like to ask, how do the government get private land to make roads? Haven't the government acquired these land? Which particular area are you talking about? I'm talking throughout, throughout the country, how the government gets access no, most of the roads that are built are based on existing roads. Unless if you have a new housing scheme that you build roads on, or if you have a new highway that you're passing through. Okay. Well, so I'm, I'm most times, that most most of the times, we build over existing dilapidated infrastructure. You know, you know. If there's a highway that going into a greenfield place where there's a new highway a new, and it goes through private lands, obviously our government will have to talk to those private owners to see alternative lands or, or, or remuneration for the land or whatnot. Yes, but but it's, not, it's not an everyday thing that you, you, you'll find that. Most of the roads that we're doing are existing infrastructure that has gone bad. What is the question, sir? What is the question, question? or what is the specific I, thing? Please don't be general. I'm in a situation. And I'm kindly asking the government to come at Woodley Park and intervene into my affairs and see what is going on with me. I have a business. I have workers working. People lock me down. I have no way to pass, sir. I have family. I'm a very poor man. I come from nothing. What, what is the point? What, what's no, the point? there's a guy that says he has a okay, business. Okay, so here, so, so I will get your number from, from yeah, the he call. calls often, he calls often. And I will certainly tomorrow, I'll check in to see what's going on in Woodley Park with those construction is going on there. So, um, I'm living in the cultivation. Where? I've been the area for 15 years and then people... Yeah, you called several times and I'm, I'm glad that the minister's here. They could yeah, I'll check on what's going on in Woodley Park. What's the number? Could you give us a number right away? Yes, 613. Thank you, okay. sir. Thank okay. you very much. Sir, listen to me. I have a grain teasing facility or pepper grain teasing facility, the only grain teasing facility in the country. And the business name, nip it in the bud one guy. Okay. Yes. I, I, I'm gonna send I'm gonna send somebody to check on this tomorrow and I'll call you myself. I need an investigation okay. in the moment. Yes, yes. Thank you very I much. I got you. Bye bye. Good evening, Carlo. Hi, good evening. Uh, um, I live in Toronto, but I'm up in Lenora, and I know the minister is doing a lot of work in Lenora. My concern is that they got a hospital, they got a new mall, but the market there, sir, and I know you're doing a lot of work in the market, too. Got to get those people off the road there, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay, thank you. Good. Thank you. Good evening, Carlo. Good evening. Is this the Friday Kildari show? Yes, it is. Go right there. Um, good evening to the Minister um, Inder. Um, is it possible to give an update on a street in Rossignol by the name of Murphy Dan? It has been in a deplorable condition for the longest while. I've actually seen the bill of quantity. Um, over three months ago, and nothing has been done as yet on the street. Morphida. 
Yeah, no, yeah no. Murphy and Roger. No. Mama, I'll check this. I will check this. And um, is this your number? I'll that on the show. Yes, the, it is. I'll yes, call you. Is. Right. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay, one second. No go away yet. I, I think I have it. Well, one second. Okay. Don't go away yet. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. You're welcome. Bye. bye, -bye. Good evening, caller. Hi, good evening. I wanted to congratulate the minister on this program. And I want to say this is a very good program. I'm really glad this way that this program is really good. Get it. It's a bit controversy, uh, different from the rest of the program. My problem, though, that I do have is that there's so much social issues going on, and we know that the government may not be able to address. But there's the intersection of people. You have vulnerable groups that the key population, which are comprised of trans LGBT persons, and there's no place that really has ministers or where really you could really go to and get support from the government, especially like for instance when we had the in the flood and all these other things. Which flood? I really leave behind. You know that there's a preach that the one guy, no. okay. which I endorse the one guy, but it doesn't trigger down to all the other vulnerable groups that make up guy as an old. But I'm not too sure I'm that's not... the minister's portfolio. No, no, but before that. But he... No, but I'm speaking general about the government. It's not just that this particular minister. No, but I, I just wanted to know which vulnerable group you're speaking about, to be exact. I'm speaking about LGBT groups. The LGBT community? Yes, sir. What's, what's vulnerable about them? So that's what I was asking. Many, what? When I said vulnerable, I mean there's no way that... L trans MSM if you out there and known that you would able to go and get a job being yourself as a trans woman and being employed even though that we had a cross wrestling I don't I don't think this society the highest court struck no, but there's no provision in the book even if it's been struck out of parliament that we could be comfortable in our own skin and able to get a job in the government no, but this, industries this... and all these things and able to sustain ourselves as a guy in this situation. So, madam, this country doesn't discriminate against people with different sexual orientation. They got people heading important institutions in this country that are not uh, of heterosexual orientation. I I I I I, I don't um I've I've worked at university for twenty six years and um some of some of, of the important people there were were not um well from the LGB thing. Um but there's also um a private organization that gets a lot of funding from the Western embassies there. I can tell you I have specific knowledge of that. There there is a there is a group LGBT group called S A S O D SASOD and they get a substantial amount of money annually from the Western embassies. So maybe you can you, you can contact that group. Yeah, but that group might be not able to employ people. It might be advocating for rights and such forth, human rights violation. But when it's a the minister can, the government, he's a minister of the government, he could talk all right. about the government. All right, I'm sure I think you've raised a very important issue. I'm sure the minister will be listening. I'm sure that he'd be transferring um, what he would have heard to his colleague ministers um, as part of their policy making. It's a good uh, platform to raise it. I thank you very much for coming through. Bye. Bye bye. Good evening, Carlo. You got to lower the volume of whatever you're listening to. Could you do that? Sorry, okay. Thank you very much. Roads, bridges, Everything. airports, street lights. Let's talk about it. You have the opportunity. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Minister, I want to pinpoint a very, very patriotic person high in your ministry when it comes to road lights. I don't know his first name. I know his last name is Siram. Ooh. That's that's an excellent that's an excellent guy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Carlo. Go ahead, Carlo. Good evening. I, I, good night. I just call him but it's Minister. Yes. Um you know about over here, man. You wear the bridges, right? at the Ogle by the gas station and every night and day the trucks I can't sleep in the night I'm a businessman <laughs> and I finish work and I come home 
all night the trucks is banging, bang, bang. Well, I have the same problem. I live on the way in bank pen. But what are you gonna do? I they put in ten thousand house lot at the back of Diamond Would here, you? right? That's Seventh Avenue, and they're going through yeah. the street. You gotta see what they do with it. Minister, my the vibrating is, I mean, uh, but, but 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 the, it raises a point that I started when we what I said at the start of the show is that you have some you know some problems that comes with even yeah yeah, yeah it is the ogle road um that he's talking about from time to time this is ogle airport road he's talking about ogle no, no, the gas it's station the it's the bridge before the airport road but yeah but the trucks go through there they go to the back there because we're constructing the 7.7 7 no, no, kilometer highway no minister we talking on the public road last year they came and they do an alignment with the bridge and it was good and afterwards, by the the, the road gets thinking, talking, then the truck just keep buying. Like yeah, so we got to, so that's, that's what I was getting at. That's what I was getting at. I was getting at, so if the road is maintained, you wouldn't get that banging. The mm. trucks will move. We got to maintain the road. It's when you have a dip in the road and the truck fall and you hear that noise and they keep hitting bang, 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 bang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got to maintain the road whilst they're the doing it. Uh -huh. so that is the issue. All right, thank you very much for calling, Carlo. Okay. All right, the calls are coming in pretty quickly. Good evening, Carlo. Hey, good evening, sir. Um, this, this, um, I mean, uh, I like the program, or I like what you guys are doing, but I have one uh, problem where I observe some of the contractors. I mean, while the government is doing good things, building roads and streets and things, the same very contractor who are told not to use certain roads because it's freshly built or because of something else, or they cannot damage the infrastructure into a new housing scheme, they continue to use the easy way in instead of using the. What specific, what specific area, sir? This is the back of Lumbrell and Enterprise. Yeah, so we were there the other day with the Vice President and the Attorney General. Do you remember yeah, that? The yeah. And the issue yeah. did come up and we are addressing it, right? No, but it, con it continued while some of the contractors, a contractor I, I heard you, sir. I heard you and you made the complaint. Did you, were you at the meeting that made the complaint? No, 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 I was not at the meeting, but I sent you a video. Yeah, yeah, but there were a lot of people. The same contractor, the rest of the contractor complaining, you know? But this particular contract, they hear some guys working with them. They soak in the road. When they soak in the road and people tell them, well, you know something, you cannot just pass it and fly by like that. It does gonna still fly. They become abusive to people. Oh. Understand? And that is not right. Okay. I, I personally went and I spoke to the guys them in, in self. I said, what you are doing is not right. But they continue the same way. And the rest of the contractor complain using the arms. Yeah. But this particular contractor, he continued to use, and the road that he uses is the only main road to come into the new scheme at the back end. Yeah, I know. I was damage, in there the other day. This, and if there's damage, right? I know of the problem, sir. I know of this problem. Right, we got and we'll continue to work right. with these people, but at the same time, everybody asks for no, a flag the, the, the next set of contractors, they are very nice people. They're I, they're I heard, I, I, yes. sir, I, as I said to you, this report came with a visit to the community. We went there and a number of people raised this issue. Because this is the reason why the front street in, in Nonpareil long there between the enterprise and uh, break up. No, no, we, I'm talking about the front street. You know, you get the no, I'm saying to you, as a result of the trucks moving, they break up the street because the people in the community told us that too. No, 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 no. The minister is saying to you that he is hard your complaint. And, and other people give the same right, right. We are looking so into. So he's Don't addressing it. it. I myself through the street that the people said in that building road, and they got to fix the road. We just using the road. They said it. They said it. They can't leave it. <laughs> All right. Later. Thank you. Bye. All right, bro. Good evening, Carla. I saw you had to disrespect the minister like that. Oh. Yes, All right. Hello? Yes, go right ahead, ma'am. Good evening. Um, good night, everyone. I want to move away a little bit from the road. I want to speak about these um, nice pavements, like along the Central Road, the Lamaha Street, you know, all these avenues that they're, they're paving, 
This is looking very pretty and nice. But I have a problem because, I mean, don't mind what day you go down into town. The garbage there. Isn't there somebody, some contractor to pick up garbage along these nice paved avenues and so per week? And the bins are overflowing. <laughs> Mom, Mom, I, I, I wish, I wish, I wish as a minister that I had the answers for you. But we in this government, led by the president himself, had five. I'm the, I'm the chairman of the National Enhancement Committee, which is a committee that deals with a whole host of agencies that deal with picking up of the garbage. And we had five of these things, and you pick up the garbage, and the next day you go and people throw back garbage. Yeah. I know, I know. But, but and, and these places that we've developed, like the railway embankment, the... Um, the public works have been doing it. I mean, uh, the president lead these and initiatives and, 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 and the team. You know, you, you all have... And I stay the place all the time too. So I agree with you. We have a problem, but this is not a government problem. This is everybody in the country problem. Look, we just finished the Springlands area. I saw a video. They break persons who go use the place and breaking it up. They got one in La Jalousy through the Forest Lady uh, office that we built down there. Nice yeah, when place. The forest, La Jalousy, yeah, yeah. Right? The lights, they break up the lights. Yeah. Thing. You know, we you have some, some lights by the New Amsterdam, the same uh, thing. Uh -huh. I you know, know, I know, I know what you're saying. And we got a bunch of dirty people in this country. No, I'm not going to say, I'm, I'm not, not going to do that, but because I'm a, a representative of, of the people, but I also would say that when we build these infrastructure, these are supposed to be meant for everybody. And it doesn't give no one the right to go break it up. Garbage is a city council then mandate too. And the same thing with the garbage. Everybody, you know, throw the garbage, you know. Those you business, clear people, up the place those and business then, people downtown, they throw their garbage you clear and up the, the You road. clear up the country, you clear up the place and garbage again, garbage again. Yeah, everybody, have, everybody have the responsibility to dispose in their own garbage. Okay. It shouldn't be my responsibility to go clean your garbage. And, that, and we did that as a, as a government. Ministers, the president, vice president, uh, not vice, uh, prime minister, everybody all over the place cleaning garbage. Okay, thank garbage. you very much for coming through, ma'am. Good evening, caller. Good night. Yes, go right ahead. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm actually a security guy at Ogle, for the airport, the main road from the east to the airport, it's in terrible shape. And mm -hmm. I think they need to look at the heavy load those trucks are coming in, right? Mm -hmm. Because there is no parapet and so on, everything is broken up and heavy mud. It's gonna, um, be, it's gonna be difficult, but go ahead. Yeah, so I don't know if when they're looking to actually do this road because it's heavy traffic. This is the current. This is the current road. So you're talking about that is being uh, bombarded with the trucks that are that are going to the the new highway that we're building there. Yes, he said yeah, the road did it to the airport. Airport road that comes in. Okay, but you said something about mud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there is no road shoulder. The, 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 the road don't have shoulder because they truck them when like two trying to, to pass. One would be off the road completely with the weight. Some are stuck and they have to be pulled out. And yeah, so, 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 the, so the let me tell you, this matter was raised before by residents in the community. We've called in the contractor and we told them that if you're going to break the road, you got to fix the road. Because the road was maintained by Public Works, we normally keep it because it's going to the airport. And a lot of people see that road for us in force, and the first time they come in the country and so, and when they leave too, especially those using that airport. So the contractor have to continue to maintain that road because it's the trucks that are causing the damage to the road. And we have told the contractor, we have actually written them on, on that too. We got to enforce it a little more because is constantly truck moving through there, the, and to the large ones too. So I know this problem. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So probably yeah but you can't go, but you can't go build way. a shoulder. The problem, if you go put a shoulder there, the problem is that the, the, the weight is simply because of the weight of the trucks going on the road. Uh -huh. and I the think shoulder that, uh, won't solve the problem there, sir. I think the problem that you have, do you stop the development or how? what do you do? Because you have to do so it. That that do you put them? So it, the, the highway is meant to... To, to, to be a major bypass of traffic going into Georgetown. 
So take them straight to, to Eccles area. People who are going to the airport or going to Region 3 and so on. It's and it's it's development, but development, as I said, it comes with these problems. Yeah, but, but the problem is that the contractor, if the contractor is destroying the road, they gotta fix it. And we gotta make sure that that happens. Thank you very much for coming through, Carlo. So do you have a contractor assigned to the road? The contractor that is building the main road is overseas contractor. The main road and the trucks that are going there taking sand to do the sand filling of the road. I don't know. I, all I know, it's really a problem, and like for low vehicles and so, it's a real, real yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah, I know, because they're getting some bulges on the road. I saw it a yeah. couple of days ago. Thank you very much, Carla. Very good point. Bye-bye. Good. Um, and Minister, before I take this next call, I did somewhere in your closing, because we have a few minutes more, mm -hmm. I would like to know whether you're having any progress having contractors listen to the government, especially when they do screwy things in contravention to the contracts. So, you want me to answer that now? Please, Okay. Good. Again. So, every contractor that is employed by the government, they have to follow the contractual terms that is in the contract. How to build the road, the width of the road, how much sand to put, how much loam to put, how much asphalt to put, everything the gradient of the road they got the length and they have to make sure they put it the, the compaction tests have to be done at each, every level right if persons are not doing that engineers are not doing that well then they're shortchanging the government they're shortchanging their their position as an engineer if the contractors know very well they're supposed to do um, um four inch sand four inch loom and two inch asphalt and they decide to make this their own business and uh, and, and do skullduggery here they have what we call the cross section test the bore holes that will they'll normally do after the road is done and they will do the measured works what about the inconvenience to citizens so normally when you have a contractor the government and the engineers and so ministers and so would normally go to a community but you got every community having what you can practically go out to but you're supposed to go and talk to the community to say we're doing this road so and so and so you know and, and talk to the community because roads as i said the last time on this program they're meant to be a good thing it can't turn out to be bad mm -hmm. and i've seen a lot of um situation where the contract and the residents end up in you know they cross thread because mm -hmm. of various things like a culvert some size so you just gotta go in and deal with them if person do work that is substandard or they're not doing it in the timing that is supposed to do it there are things in the contract liquidated damages you can charge them you can um terminate the contract, terminate the contract right 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 and some contractors even you know they, they end up getting blacklist if they do work that is knowingly that they should not do end up doing and causing you know problems for the community and, and, and the government too so all of those things are tools that you have to deal with them but i think one of the things that you didn't say minister which i think people need to understand is that when you are doing a, a, a substantial increase in number of infrastructure projects it comes along one with the shortage of um, contractors and two with headache especially you talk about it earlier you have a shortage of um, engineers and clerk of works across the country so those are compounding problems i guess we could take very quick calls good evening Carla. Good evening. Hi. Um, I just would like to identify this one road in Kingwood. It was awarded actually a year, a year and a half to a contractor. I don't know his name. But that road is just be situated just behind the Virginia Primary School. And um, it's been standing here for a while. Um, they, got, they get out and the sun fill it and that's it. A year, actually a year and a half is still standing. Virginia Primary okay. School. I gotta check this one to see if because they didn't do the work, it was terminated and. Um, yeah, we got another yeah, yeah, so Why I check on this? Because my brother in law is living there and he uses a wheelchair and it's uh, not in it in in the really condition. He's trying to get out. Can I? Can I? Where you Can I? I don't know if you would like to give a number so I can maybe call. Yes. Um. Two five seven zero three two five seven zero three five eight. Or 629 6658. 629 6698. 629 6658 or 257. Thank you. Thank you. I'll check on this here tomorrow for you. Right? Is Andrew? No, King Road. King Road. King Road. King Road. Just behind. Just behind my icon. No, no, the place. We did the main access road and so with some community roads and so, but 
We gotta check what's going on behind. Good evening, caller. Hi, good evening. Lower your volume. Hello. Uh, hi, um, am I on the show? Yeah, but you gotta lower whatever you're listening to. We come in, we not hear you clear. But you gotta come quickly, we're out of time, you have to hurry. Hello? Very quickly, last I call there. Good evening, caller. Hello? No, sure. uh, I don't think they're ready, we're out of time, my apologies. You guys coming too, you gotta get ready. Uh, Minister, I, I, I wanna say, well, I, your closing remarks and then Freddie. I don't know it was quiet tonight. Well, um, well tonight, Minister's Night. So tonight we dealt with um, a particular area with roads and bridges and, you know, other things. And But the Ministry of Public Works is, you know, there is a lot of other areas that, you know, we, we, we look after the aviation, the har aviation sector, the Harbour Bridge, Transport and Harbours, Marad, you know, all of the ferries and so on. Um, the road lighting, you know, sea defences. And I also have added responsibility in the office of the Prime Minister where I deal with, you know, um, the daily management of, you know, like GPL and mm -hmm. you know, um, GEA, hinterland electrification and so. We also deal with the hinterland roads, them and so, air strips and so. So it's a, it's a big ministry. So there's a lot of responsibility and a lot of projects to manage. So the Community Roads Program is one of the biggest because of the number of roads that you're doing in various communities. So you do get from time to time, you get issues, but the main thing is when you get the issues, what do you do with them, mm -hmm. you know? So for the person that call in tonight, definitely check on, you know, check on them. Um, and for those that I got numbers for, I'll call them and so on to make sure that we see what's going on with some of them, right? Absolutely. Some of them I could have give a response right away some of them that I have to check to see what's going on because I don't know if my if it's within my ministry or another ministry too is, is dealing with the project too uh -huh. so we gotta we gotta check on that but you know some things that we might not agree on all the time with the widening of the road and a lot of people are asking for you know some people want six inch concrete take on some of the concrete roads you're building so that big trucks can drive or haulers can drive we can't, you know, some things you might not be able to agree on for community roads that pass through small communities where people have their houses and so on, and live with their family in a quiet life. On the highways and so, um, we continue to build them out, but those, because they are highways and they're going through what we call green, um, green field projects through virgin lands and so, the artworks is massive, yep. meaning oh. the sand that you have to put to make sure that you know you get a it's good compact, right, you right. get a good uh, base for the road. That particular project, they put in the wick drains so that they can bring up the the the, um, the moisture so that the road it won't be wavy at the top when you finish with it. They have a solid base. Those projects that you're doing in the housing sector, so to build the, the artworks is be a lot. So movement of sand trucks and so. Is something that when you build another country, it's it's a must. It will happen. It's how you manage it, how you try to minimize the negative impact of trucks moving through communities, breaking roads, and so. So you have to juggle all these variables. At the same time, delivering you know on promises that you made, mm -hmm. delivering house lots to people that thousands upon thousands upon thousands, but sixty thousand plus people must have house lot application right now. How do you get that? Get that? We got build the schemes. Mm -hmm. So you're going to inconvenience a couple of people, some people, some communities, but you have to deliver housing for people too. Highways, a lot of people don't want to be in traffic jam. You got to build the highways, right? And the highways open up all sorts of lands and so. So the country is being developed and there are some inconveniences, but we have to manage as much as we can to minimize that impact. And I think that the some of the persons calling and tonight, um, calls were more limited to roads and so on, so we get to concentrate on on those. But, no. You know, um, there are more um, that is happening across the country. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Freddie. I want mm -hmm. to end on a, I want to end my participation in the program on a romantic note. Oh, my goodness, um, I it have very, I have book. very fond memories of my wife and I walking on the pedestrian part of the Harbour Bridge. We used to do that quite often and then look at the river. The new harbor bridge will have that part 
that you can walk. Because yeah, have your young days back again. Yeah, well, okay, yeah, sure. I relive my young days with my wife. We used to go walking in the Harbour Bridge all the time. Minister, thanks for coming here. This is, it was quite, um, it was quite. Folks, I always uh, dreamed of having our politicians um, connecting with the people. And I know the government has been uh, working uh, in a lot of the village communities across the country. I have a president, as soon as he landed on a, a, from a plane, he gone. And which is something that I like. But it is good when we see our politicians, our leaders, our ministers connecting with the people. I'm not afraid because it's not easy sitting here. So you never know what's going to come through the phone. <laughs> um, but he has, uh, like, I, I, I myself forgot. I used to cover the Ministry of Public Works when I was working at Kaichu News. And I, I, it's always a very big ministry, big, uh, big developments happening here. And it's good to have our government uh, listening to the people and sitting on, and sometimes things are going to go haywire. But, Minister, I want to say thank you very much on behalf of myself and Freddie Kisun. I want to see more of this, and I'm sure that the people who have called in, uh, they have the concerns, and rightfully so. They expect the government, they have a lot of expectations of the government. Um, so wherever you are, folks, we're going to be back with you. This is not the end of it. We're going to try to get more ministers. I'm sure that Minister Deodatin, our minister within the Ministry of Public Works, is going to be happy to come back again. It's a lot of work, but it is what they have to do, and we expect lots from them. So wherever you are, whatever it is that you're doing, we're going to be back with you on Wednesday. This is Leonard Gildari and Freddie Kisun saying goodbye, and Minister Deodatin saying goodbye to you as well. Thank you.